All right, I'd like to open the uh, Monday, March 15th, Leavenworth Board of Zoning Appeals. We do have a quorum, three present and one remote. Next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes for the 25th of January meeting. If all had a chance to read it, are there any changes, comments, questions, or a motion to approve? So moved. I second. Motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Old business election of officers. I now, will just, just say, Michelle uh, mentioned that Ron was undecided about continuing his term. So if you want to take that to consideration with your <laughs> nomination. So. Doesn't his expire in 2023? Yeah. Yeah. He just started over last city. Was it last year? Yeah. I was trying to get out early. Yeah, so he's he he he'll be here for another cycle. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. 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 yeah, at least another cycle. Okay. Yeah. Well anyway, so it's uh, the chair and the vice chair? Yes. Do I have any nominations? I will nominate you for the chair. Absolutely. I knew that was coming. Okay, we have a motion. I agree. <laughs> As she takes her drink. All right, we have, a, we have a short list for the chairman. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. <laughs> Abstain. <laughs> All right, nominations for the vice chair. I nominate Mr. Gervasini. Second that. All right, motion and second. Any other nominations? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 I'll abstain. Okay, congratulations, Thanks. Vice Chair. All right, new business. First item, 2021-05, <coughs> Spruce Street. Staff report, please. Hey, Jackie Porter, I'll handle this one. All right, thank you. The applicant is requesting a variance to allow a sign to exceed the maximum square footage required for an attached sign for a property zoned in R19, a medium de density single family residential district. The, the business is Kansas City, Kansas Community College. Um, as defined in the development regulations, public or semi-public facilities like a school are allowed signage as regulated and permitted in a neighborhood business district. The development regulations requires that the maximum size of a wall sign be either 96 square feet or 10% of the wall surface, whichever is less. The proposed sign is on the north, on the north wall that is total size is 224.25 square feet and white lettering saying Kansas City, Kansas Community College. And the variance request is for a sign on the north side of the building to exceed the maximum size requirement of a single, of a sign on a single side. Okay. And you can see it's, it's kind of up there at a distance there on the, the curvature portion. Yeah. Okay. And Anne is also on here if you have yep, questions. Anne is on too. Um, she's the sign contractor if you have any questions for her. Okay. Any questions of the staff or mm -hmm. the uh, representative of the applicant? No. No, sir. Okay. I think it's pretty straightforward. Is it lighted from behind? Anne, is this sign going to be lighted? You're muted, Anne. There we there. go. Okay. Sorry. Yep. Sorry, I had to hit on you. Um, no, it's not lighted. They're just uh, non-lighted letters, um, and definitely they need to be fairly large to be able to be seen from the road as far back as it sits off the road. Mm -hmm.
Okay, uh, if there's no questions, then uh, we'll open the public hearing. If anyone would like to speak either in favor of or against, come up to the podium and the microphone. And I see none, so we will close the public hearing and open it up for discussion amongst the board members. Any comments or questions? Did you, how many square feet did you say that this sign encompasses? 224 and a quarter square feet. If at some point in time they want to put like lights on it up against it, not as a part of the sign, is there any issue with that? No, there wouldn't be an issue with that. Okay. Because if there was, then maybe we could do a caveat and add yeah, it to there, it there would and be take no care separate. of everything at once. Yeah, there'd be no separate requirement for that, so they'd be allowed to do that. Okay. Are, are there any neighbors that have uh, filed any grievance or opposed that? No, they have not. The only one called and asked what specifically are we talking about is signage. I told them it's on the wall, and they were okay with it. Thank you. Okay. Well, so how large is the wall exactly? Because if the limits, as we've stated here, are 96 square feet or 10% of wall surface, I'm just curious, what is the exact wall surface? And do you know how big that wall is that it's being placed on? I know that it's a, it's like a, it's huge. It's like a 100 foot wide radius and whatever the height is. I, I don't think we're even close to 10%. Plus the building continues to go out to yeah. the north and the south. Um, it's a little bit interesting just because it's that radius, which makes it even trickier, but because it's so far off the road, as you can see from that illustration, it, it doesn't appear that large because it's so far back. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and it's the 96 square feet or 10%, whichever is less. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just curious. Yeah. We, that's, that's the standard. It's only a single yeah. single story structure as well, so it, it might be a little tall, but yeah. but it's not two stories yeah. or anything and it's, like yeah, that. Yeah, it's up that hill and pretty far back from the road, so it's yeah, it's pretty. It tough needs to, to see. be big to be able to be seen. Right. Okay. Okay. If there's no further discussions, I'll go through the uh, the variance request. A request for a variance may be granted upon a finding of the board that all of the following conditions have been met. The board shall make a determination on each condition and the finding shall be entered into the record. The first one, that the variance request that arises from such condition which is unique to the property in question and is not ordinarily found in the same zone or district and is not created by an action or actions of the property owner or the applicant. Commissioner Drusini. I vote aye. Agree. Agreed. And Commissioner Kim. Um, agree. Sorry, I can't see you right now, so. Oh, okay. Second. Agree is kind of messed up. That the granting of the permit for the variance will not adversely affect the rights of adjacent property owner or residents. Why don't we just go on Agree. the same, same one? Agree. Agree. And Commissioner Agree. Camp. Agree. That the strict application of the provisions of the development regulations from which the variance is requested will constitute unnecessary hardship upon the property owner represented in the application. Agree. 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 That the variance desired will not adversely affect the public health, safety, morals, order, convenience, prosperity, or general welfare. Agree. 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 And lastly, 
that granting of the variance desired will not be opposed to the general spirit and intent of the development regulations. I agree. Agree. Agreed. Commissioner Kemp. Agreed. Okay. Based on the voting, uh, the uh, board unanimously agrees to approve the variance. In granting the variance, the board may impose such conditions, safeguards, and restrictions upon the premises benefited by the variance as may be necessary to reduce or minimize any potentially injurious effects of such variance upon other property in the neighborhood and to carry out the general purpose and intent of the development regulations. Were there any? No. I think it's pretty straightforward, so I would say we just approve it as, uh, approve the, the variance request as uh, submitted. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Ann. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too. You too. Um, bye. Okay, this second item. 2021-6, 312 North 12th Street. Staff report, please. Okay, this is a request for a variance to allow two wall signs and one projecting sign for a non-conforming commercial use in a district zone R16 high-density single-family residential district. Um, the property is 312 North 2nd Street. It's the site of Bailey's Irish Pub, which was formerly occupied by Marfield's Pub. So this one is just a little bit tricky since it's um, a non-conforming use, but the variance request is just for the signage. So I just want to go over uh, briefly why that non-conforming use is allowed um, per the regulations and why we're just talking about the signage. So again, it is zoned R16, high density, single family residential, and restaurant uses are not allowed in that zoning district. However, since it was formerly um, occupied by Marfield's Pub, that was uh, a non-conforming use by definition since it had been there for decades, had, that building had always been a restaurant. So mm -hmm. the, the regulations define non-conforming use as an existing use which does not comply with the use regulations applicable to new uses in the zoning district in which it is located. So thereby Marfield's was a non-conforming use. So then further in regards to the abandonment or discontinuance of a non-conforming use, so Marfield's closing down and a different restaurant opening in that same location, um, the regulations state that when a non-conforming use is abandoned for a period of 24 consecutive months, any subsequent use or occupancy of such land after this period shall comply with the regulations of the zoning district in which such land is located. Marfield's pub closed down in um, early 2019. It was, it was between like January and March of 2019. Um, and then Bailey's opened in May of 2019. So that was less than 24 months. So thereby, it's the same type of non-conforming use. The type of use did not change. So since it was still a restaurant, that was allowed to continue per the regulations didn't need any sort of variance or rezoning or anything like that. So the use is fine. However, um, Marfields, they were displaying at the time, they had one projecting sign and then three painted signs on the building. And the regulations do state in regards to non-conforming signs that a non-conforming sign existing lawfully at the time of the passage of this sign code may be continued under the terms as Hereinafter provided that such non-conforming signs shall be modified to conform, replaced with a conforming sign, or removed according to the following. And the first is, is if there is a change in business ownership, tenant, name, or type of business. So the R16 zoning district doesn't allow for any type of commercial signage in that zoning district, even if there is a, an allowed non-conforming use. Since Marfields had already been there and had their signage, that signage was existing, non-conforming. Marfields was allowed to keep that signage as long as they were in business. Once that business changed, even though the use was allowed as another continuance of a non-conforming use, any new signage would have to conform with our current regulations, which no commercial 
signage is allowed in the district. So that's how we're here just to talk about the signage and the use is allowed. So before we go, is it, are there any questions on that part of it? Is the, the size of the, of the sign in question this, this, the exact same one? They're just changing the logo that's on it? Or has it physically been changed out? The projecting the, sign, yeah, the projecting one. sign is the same size. Um, and let me, let's get I've actually got some pair of pictures if you'd like. Well, okay, uh, yeah, we'll and, get you up here in just a minute. Yeah, and I've seen it, but I didn't pay any attention when it was Marfield on what type of sign it was. Yeah, and all so that. you can see The exact here, same thing and just repaint it to a different logo on the exact same structure it's a little bit di it's a little bit different so there's a, there's, a, there's a significant difference mike because back 10 15 years ago do box there no it didn't say do box but there was a de Corsi dairy sign uh -huh. on the side of that building in the same place that we're talking about uh -huh. basically um and that was fostered, believe it or not, by the city because the Corsi Dairy was one of the one of the businesses in town in the early 20th century. Mm -hmm. So um, that was on the south side of the building. So this is a Google Street View from 2017 when it was still Marfield. So you can see the painted Esplanade Tavern. Yeah. Um, I'm guessing that must have been what it was called before it was Marfields. I'm not sure exactly how long Marfields was in there, but it had been quite some time. And then this, you can see the projecting sign mm -hmm. on the front. Be a little better. Yeah, you can see um, kind of sticking out from that front wall, mm -hmm. uh, Marfields Pub. So Bailey's, uh, they've got a projecting sign up there in the same location. Um, theirs is round. Instead of square, mm -hmm. the building has been painted. So everywhere that it said Esplanade Tavern or Cafe has been painted over. And let me get to their signage. So there you can see their, their projecting okay. mm -hmm. sign there in the same location. Yep. Um, so, you know, four foot round sign. And then they have the, the same sign. Same. They've got one on the north and one on the south. And they actually did come in for permits for these back in April of 2019 and August of 2020. Um, and those were approved just inadvertently by staff. We we're just kind of going through and didn't catch that they really needed to get a variance for those. So when we caught it um, here, here recently, we asked them to come back in to apply for the variance to get in conformance. And uh, he was happy to do that. So. Okay. So that is why we're here to talk about the signs. So again, they've got the one projecting sign. It's a four by it's a four foot circle sign, and then the two wall signs um, that are, I believe, the same size, the four foot round. Um, and they do have permits issued for those. And so, if you have any questions for me, I can answer those. And then the owner of the business, the property, is here as well. You answered the only one I had. Any other questions from board members? No. No, I, just a note. I think, Mark, uh, the uh, Esplanade Tavern had three wall signs, didn't they? Yeah, so. I believe they had, let me get back to, yep, they had one on the south, the north, and the front, which would be the west. So, yeah, they had those three painted signs as well as the projecting sign. So they're replacing it with just a solid extension type sign and then two two wall signs yep so all that painted uh verbiage has been painted over and then there's just the round sign on the north and the south and the one projecting sign where it was before okay, okay. thank you okay i have nothing else sir. okay commissioner kem do you have any uh any questions i do not Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'll go ahead and open the public hearing then. And anyone who wants to uh, speak in favor of or against, please come up to the podium and state your name. And, well, uh, I, I 
Thanks, Matt, Judy. I want to know the pup. Um, I think she's covered everything well. The only thing that I have right here is I, I'd like to do it if I can pass them up if you want it. Those yes. are some actual photos of what it looks like right now. Is it? Uh, they're not big. Oh, There's that. There's no lighting on them. Uh, I was going to say we have them in the so, packet, don't we? So that'll give you a better idea of what they look like to blend in this area. Yes, sir. I know there, that the signs are already done, but isn't it a little overkill to have so many signs that you can, with the one in the front, you can you can see coming both ways? Because I just drove by there and it, it hits you. It, it's 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 no doubt that. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 just, I, I, I just kind of, I don't know. I can't. It's hard to ask if it's overkill or not. We're just kind of looking to get. Get the signage for each side of the stick out. Um, I don't know if we've had okay. any complaints. Our neighbors haven't had any complaints. Um, right. And we received no complaints um, from property owners that were notified either. Okay. Some sometimes that's the issue is the neighborhood. Well, I, I can understand a lot of big lights and stuff too as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience like to speak? If not, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing and open it up for discussions amongst the board members. And if none, then we can go ahead and go into the voting. A request for a variance may be granted upon a finding of the board that all of the following conditions have been met. The board shall make a determination on each condition and the findings shall be entered into the record. First item, that the variance requested arises from such condition which is unique to the property in question and is not ordinarily found in the same zone or district and is not created by an action or actions of the property owner or the applicant. I agree. Um, I'll agree. I agree. And I agree, and I think this is one of those situations where um, the signage ordinance maybe needs to be modified. I mean, it would, I think it'd be unreasonable to have a commercial business that you're going to allow to continue as a non-conforming use, but not allow it to have any signage. Uh, it does seem unreasonable. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, I, I don't know what the answer would be in terms of what that looks like in the ordinance but i think it is something that's worth a look yeah kathy we had the same thought as well and you know this is one of those things where it just hadn't come up before mm -hmm. and then it came up twice here for mm -hmm. this particular meeting and so mm -hmm. um just one of those things that we catch and say oh okay maybe that didn't quite work um mm -hmm. you know how it was necessarily intended so we yeah. are going to be taking a look at that yeah, one of the one of the issues i had the struggling with was if it was a continuation of the exact same mm -hmm. Restaurant, just a different owner, same sign, same location. Yeah, grandfather it in. Waiting two years before, before another business. Uh, anyway, yes, yes. I, so I, think, I think staff should So the thought is we probably need to get, um, if the non-conforming use, if they're um, allowed a, up to a 24-month gap in there, then we probably just need to get that gap um, with the signage and the use of, uh, consistent so that if a use is allowed then signage is allowed and so we're definitely taking a look at that yeah well there was or just, a, the just a piece of history yeah dubox restaurant was in that building years ago and then for several years there was uh they closed the fa i guess the family died off and it was a vacant building and while it was vacant, believe it or not, there was a, a prisoner that escaped from the federal penitentiary that was found in the attic oh. of that building. <laughs> and I think that was in the 80s or 90s. It was in the 90s. And then I don't know who started it up again before Marfield mm -hmm. because there was somebody else that started it up. And... There's a lot it's, of history there. There's yeah. a lot of history, and it's 
always been non-conforming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got a lot of those situations around town, yeah. as I'm sure you're aware. <laughs> so, anyway. Yeah. Okay, let's go on to number two. That the granting of the permit for the variance will not adversely affect the rights of adjacent property owners or residents. I agree. 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 That the strict application of the provisions of the development regulations from which the variance is requested will constitute unnecessary hardship upon the property owner represented in the application. I agree. 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 That the variance desired will not adversely affect the public health, safety, morals, order, convenience, prosperity, or general welfare. I agree. 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 And, last, and lastly, the granting of the variance desired will not be opposed to the general spirit and intent of the development regulations. I agree. 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 Okay. Unanimous agreement. In granting a variance, the board may impose such conditions, safeguards, and restrictions upon the premises benefited by the variance as may be necessary to reduce or minimize any potentially injurious effect of such variance upon other property in the neighborhood and to carry out the general purpose and intent of the development regulations. I think the, the only uh, concern that we had was that uh, staff relook at the, uh, the ordinances and maybe come up with uh, updating as we appropriate. Will do it. And that doesn't need to be added to this. No. In process. Okay. So, board approves the request. And the third and last item. 202107 402 South 20th Street. Staff report, please. Okay, this is um, a very similar request to the last one um, in terms of being a non conforming business, um, an, an existing non conforming business needing a variance to allow some signage. Uh, so I won't go over quite into detail, but we'll kind of, <laughs> kind of go through the specifics. So this is for uh, 402 South 20th Street. It's the location of the Suburban Restaurant. Uh, this was the space formerly occupied by Mama Mia's Restaurant. And again, as before, uh, the property is zoned R. Okay, got them muted. Um, so the property is zoned R19, which is medium density single family residential. Restaurants are not allowed and allowed use in that zoning district. Um, but again, this was a defined as a non-conforming use as uh, it had been in operation as a restaurant for decades going back. So I um, won't quite go over again why the use, the non-conforming use was allowed to continue, but I can certainly answer any questions in that regard if anybody has any questions pertaining to it. Mama Mia is closed in September of 2019. And the Suburban opened in July of 2020. So again, there was less than that 24 month time gap between the two. So that same non-conforming use was allowed to continue uh, without any sort of variance request. So, uh, but again, with the change in business ownership, tenant and name of business, uh, the signage displayed must conform with the existing sign regulations. And again, uh, commercial signage is not permitted in the R19 zoning district. So that is why we were here. And the two signs being requested are for, uh, they actually have them up already. They had submitted a sign permit application for them, I believe. And that's how we kind of ended up here. And so the, the signs they are requesting are, um, I'll get them pulled up here, are the one wall sign that is already currently on the building. It's an eight square foot sign fairly small it's on the um, deck that's out there and then a sandwich board sign which is out there um, that they place in the parking lot uh, with changing uh, yeah. place. i'm going to ask everybody to mute who's on this call please until we are ready for a public hearing i have a question on that sign yep 
uh, it doesn't look to be a permanent sign. It is the intent to uh, mount something in that frame that actually fits it and looks... Yeah. So, yeah, so, so this as is... Yeah, that sandwich reader sign is uh, movable. So it's not a permanent sign. No. So sandwich boards are defined as their own um, sign type in the sign codes. And they're intended to have that kind of changeable copy display. You see a lot of them around downtown. Um, a lot of them down here are the chalkboard type signs or with the changeable letters like that. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the way we permit sandwich board signs is it's a one-time permit. Um, and then they're allowed to keep that. It's not permitted as a temporary sign, even though it's uh, they're, the way they're defined and regulated, they're allowed to have that changeable uh, message surface for folks to utilize. So it's also movable. It can be put in any location. There's no restriction Correct. No, on they, they have to be out, outside of the right-of-way. Um, they can't block you know, intersections or sidewalks, that type of thing. Um, so they are very specifically regulated, but they are allowed to have that and move it around their property. Is there a standard for the physical uh, condition of the board itself? Uh, just that it's in good repair. Okay. Lighted, unlighted, and anything? Uh, they, I, I believe they're required to be to not be lighted, and this one is not lit. Okay. Okay. Any other questions of uh, staff? Okay, and we did have two um, letters that came in from uh, neighboring residents in opposition to this. Um, well, one in opposition that was in your um, packet, so I won't read that. And then we had another one that came in um, over the weekend, so it was too late to get that in your packet, uh, but you have been given a copy of that. But I'll just um, go over that really quick. It was more uh, questions regarding this, um, so it was from... Uh, Morgan and Mary Bean, who live at 2005 Chalk Top in the notification area for this. And so um, their questions were, how big is the sign, or the dimensions, and if we have a drawing of the signs, um, if it will be lighted, what direction it will be facing, where the sign will be located, um, and whether or not comments were allowed. So I think there might have been a little bit of confusion that the applicant was requesting additional signage to what's out there. So just to clarify, they're not requesting any additional signage to what is currently up at this time. Okay. And I believe one of the uh, the Zooms it, it yes. is, are these people? Would now be the appropriate time to Um. Yeah, I would have a public them. hearing and okay. maybe hear from the applicants first. Okay. Okay. Um, Open the public hearing. Anyone who wants to speak in favor of or against, please come up to the podium and state your name. Uh, my name is Jason Wigan. I'm one of the owners at the, uh, the Suburban. And uh, we're coming to get this variance before you guys. Um, as you stated before, it's been a restaurant going back to the 40s. Um, the signs that we have uh, are very small, uh, blends in with the decor. Uh, we don't want to put anything in there that's going to be, you know, crazy or distracting. It's already up. I think that there was probably some confusion from some of the neighbors thinking that we were going to put something additional. Um, just very small. Uh, the, the sandwich board reader is the exact sandwich board reader, reader that was there for Mama Mia's in the exact same location. Um, and then we have the small sign on the front that just says the Suburban. And, I mean, it's three feet by two feet. So, may I ask a question? Yes. Mm -hmm. Sure, thank you. I was just curious, I'm responding to a couple of the questions that Mr. Dewey Gillette, uh, I suppose I'd say he, he indicated or inferred there are several, several issues. Uh, he said you already have a sign on the restaurant. Is, is that true? Besides the two signs we've seen here? No, the only you only see those signs. Okay. Yeah, that's or well, that's the only signs that we have are those two. Yeah, the yeah the one the wall sign that's on kind right. of that the porch area. 
is the only one that's on the building, and then that, again, the sandwich board. Okay, and um, the, I, I actually think that's the only sign-related comment I have. I did have one other comment because this gentleman uh, indica uh, included it about parking and all. Do you have an agreement with Eagles Club to allow parking? I do. Overflow? Okay, just curious. Yeah. But he indicated that that was an issue and just curious. I, I've been by that area before and I didn't see it as an issue. It hasn't been. I, I know that there. previously uh, that I have heard rumors that there was an issue, but when we purchased the building, we spoke with them and we've been granted access to different parts. Sir, you've answered all my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Any, any other questions from board members? Uh, are the beans, uh, Mary and Morgan Bean, are they? Uh, I believe um, Mr. and Mrs. Bean are on. Did you have any comments for the board? Not really. We thought we were under the impression that they wanted, were wanting to add additional signage. Their existing. Um, the only the main concern was on the signs, the uh, what they call sandwich board, because there had been issues previously with Mamma where they had um, things that were obstructing views of the oncoming traffic on 20th. When we tried to pull off of Choctaw on 20th, where that tree used to be, used to block it, and there used to be is here screeching of tires all the time. Just so he doesn't put anything that blocks the view when I get ready to pull off trucks on the 20th Street. Uh, and other than that, there's no objection to anything. It's just the placement of the time so that it doesn't obstruct our views of anybody coming off of truck on the 20th. The okay. reward sign it stays inside the parking lot. Leave that that parking lot it doesn't go on sidewalks or anywhere outside of our our parking lot, and it stays in that front side. I think that he's talking about a tree that used to be on that corner. Um, which right. yeah, that would yeah. If you put something there, totally yeah. Yeah, no, there's yeah, that's that. gone. Yeah, it no longer exists. So the the reader board sign or the sandwich board sign remains inside that parking lot. Okay. Just to clarify for him. Yeah. yeah. And within the property line, I, I saw that yeah, that was also a requirement. Okay. Yeah, we don't have any objections to any of the signs like that. That was the only, in case it went up there where that tree was. But if, if, we're, if he's had it the last, there's no objections at all for us. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, thank you. Right. Yeah, thanks. I do have one question or comment, and that's... Uh, uh, the one sign, the permanent sign that's mounted on the on the deck is no issue to me is no issue. The the sandwich board sign, if it should get into disrepair or somehow get moved or whatever, who is the policing authority on that to ensure that it doesn't cause a problem? That would be code enforcement. Okay. Yep. And so if they, if it's ever in disrepair or we find it out in the right of way or something like that, code enforcement would address that. Just portable signs or kind of a nightmare to police. <laughs> they can't they can be, but yeah, we, we actually have not, have not had any complaints regarding this one. So and, and also okay. this one if I may, I'm sorry. Yeah. This is a very sturdy it has sand in the bottom of it. It's not one of those ones that's just gonna blow around in the street or something like that. It's so you it won't sound gonna blow out. It's not something that's just collapsible that yeah. is tiny. It's you know, I mean, it's small in, in size, but it has sand in the bottom, so it's not going to blow around. Once we put it in that spot, it won't move. Yeah. Out of that is, is there a yeah. standard for not to exceed certain size, and, and if it should get damaged and they replace it, would this variance give them the right to replace it with whatever they want, as long as it met a sandwich board sign or whatever, whatever category yes. this is? Yes, so in. should this variance be approved um, and this were to get damaged um, or if they just, you know, if it got, you know, weathered and worn and they wanted to replace it, with the approval of a variance, they would be allowed to replace it with a sandwich board sign per 
our regulations governing okay. sandwich boards. And, and you guys, the staff would be able to yes. do that and not come back? Correct. Because I'm looking a little forward that if, uh, you know, yes. we add any caveats to it, uh, you know, I, I wanted to make sure that, that we didn't have to say something like, this sign is okay, but if it's ever replaced, you have to come back or anything like that. Yeah. But but the this yeah. will put it in compliance, and then from then on, correct. And then they can staff can handle or, yeah, replace what everything they else. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. And, and I had one one question. It's, sure. I don't think it's terribly important, but but Mr. Gillette's property, that he his home is on the twenty on Twenty First Avenue. Is that that large? Rather large uh, property piece right in here. Um, let me see here. I was just curious. I mean, there seemed like there are three large oh. plots there, and then on twenty first, I was just curious because he seemed rather <coughs> determined to make sure that the signs didn't go in, and I was just curious what what oh. is it? I mean, what's his objection? I, I'm not sure what the objection is. I, I know that he had um, had concerns that he had voiced to staff back when this was Mama Mia's that we that staff had heard about over the years, but I'm not sure um, specifically about this restaurant if it was anything different or if it was just in general that the property is a restaurant. Okay, thank you. I, actually, I, I think I understand, but I was since it was unstated, it just said the board should say no to another sign. It's what? that big property, the big kind of square property right behind. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I thought that might be yep. his, uh, yeah. yes, or his and property. I was thinking it had more to do with the operation of the facility rather than the signage yes. concerns. Right. I, well, I that's, think, that's why I thought it was... I think in the past there was a whole series of letters to the editor in the Leavenworth Times some years ago about the objection to a restaurant being there, regardless of who was running it. I, I believe so, that was prior to me being here. But oh that's, yeah, that's, it's, yeah, that's it's, signif yeah, it's that's significantly yeah. long ago. I think it had a lot to do with the outdoor dining mm, beer garden. Is, no, this was even before they put the garden on the back. Okay. But my, my questions okay. are all answered. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other comments or questions? Uh, if not, I'll close the public hearing and go into discussion amongst the board members. Or if none of those, we'll go right into the voting. Sure, I Your preference? Go ahead. All right. Go into voting. We'll go ahead. All right. A request for a variance may be granted upon a finding of the board that all the following conditions have been met. The board shall make a determination on each condition and the finding shall be entered into the record. First condition, that the variance requested arises from such condition which is unique to the property in question and is not ordinarily found in the same zone or district and is not created by an action or actions of the property owner or the applicant. I agree. 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 And Commissioner Kim? Agreed. I agree, um, but my comment would be the same as it was on the last case that um, the ordinance needs to be reviewed. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Item two, that the granting of the permit for the variance will not adversely affect the rights of adjacent property owners or residences. Agree. 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 That the strict application of the provisions of the development regulations from which the variance is requested will constitute unnecessary hardship upon the property owner represented in the application. Agree. Agreed. 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 That the variance desired will not adversely affect the public health, safety, morals, order, convenience, prosperity, or general welfare. I agree. 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 Agreed. And lastly, that granting of the variance desired will not be opposed to the general spirit and intent of the development regulations. I agree. 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 Okay. So unanimous approval.
approval. In granting a variance, the board may impose such conditions, safeguards, and restrictions upon the premises benefited by the variance as may be necessary to reduce or minimize any potentially injurious effects of such variance upon other property in the neighborhood and to carry out the general purpose and intent of these development regulations. I think the same comment uh, that Commissioner Kim uh, made that uh, if the staff would look a little more closely at the uh, current regulations and see if any additions, updates need to be made. Okay. Uh, is that everyone in agreement on that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. And no other items on the agenda? Move to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second? Aye. Second. All in agreement, say aye. 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 Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. We do have a meeting next month. Oh. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you guys.